Speaking now with Paul Mills, the head men's basketball coach for Oral Roberts University. And coach, uh, I think it's important that that we start off our conversation today talking about the Golden Eagles run in the 2021 NCAA tournament, a number 15 seed that made it to the Sweet 16, very nearly advancing to the Elite Eight. I know it's been a little bit now that you've had a little time to uh, process the season and the postseason as well. Can you talk about what it all meant to you? Well, one, thanks, Joey, for having me. It, it, it's I haven't gotten over it. Um, I think probably in a couple of months. I I, I, I hate losing more than I like winning. Uh, winning, you kind of expect to do. Uh, you prepare to do. So when you win, it's like, man, that's par for the course. Uh, that was the expectation. When you lose, that was not expected. And especially when it's the last loss of the season, there, there's probably depths that you go to uh, physically and mentally that uh, I wouldn't advise people to go to because you can just beat yourself up and, and man, I wish I'd have done this differently, that differently. So all of those things, um, maybe in a couple of months I'll get over it. Uh, but right now it's still pretty fresh, especially when you lose a one possession game. But, you know, I'm really proud of the guys. I'm proud of the fight of the guys. I mean, the guys will tell you that that losing it is always tough. Um, but what, what you are proud of is the resiliency, the willingness to stay together as a team, regardless of whatever happens. So in that context, there is a lot of pride that's involved for just who they are as young men. Coach, you said in the postgame press conference following that, that Arkansas game, final game of the season, that good teams, good players teach you more than you can ever teach them. And with a little bit more time now, I'd like you to expand on that just a little bit, what that means then. And and then also, what are the things that you think are important to get to teach them? Yeah, one, when as I go back and I revisit a number of players, uh, coached more than 500 guys, 71 pros, uh, our staff has coached more than 28 NBA players. And there's probably not a day in practice where I don't bring up one of those 500 guys and not just the NBA names. It is, let me tell you about how this person handled that. And that is the correct way. Uh, that is, that is the way in which this should be done. And so I think what happens is you, you, you look at behaviors that, that you want to see modeled and that has, there's been a precedent by somebody else and you want to see that carried through. Um, I, I mean, a quick example was, I mean, guess what, guys? Um, things don't always go your way. Uh, so so let's not be shocked uh, when, when you don't make every shot or every defensive rotation is correct. So how do you respond to that? Is it throwing my head back? Is it doing this? And you just talk about, let me tell you how a good player, and I usually throw out a name, and just how they just take ownership. Um, and, and, and so those little things like that, and when you watch it modeled at a really high level, cause the reality is, is I do not make a free throw. I do not get a rebound. And so those guys are in the course of the fight. They're in, they're in the midst of it. And so their emotions, especially for teenagers and early twenties are at a hundred. And so when you watch them respond to it and respond to it correctly, You're like, man, I wonder if I would model that same behavior. And and, and so there's a sense of, man, I just learned a lot from watching this young man. And sometimes it's just authenticity off the court. Um, There's a transparency that good players have, in my opinion, of literally telling you areas basketball wise or off the court where they struggle because they want to be upfront about, man, how can I get better? And so I I think from all of those contexts that really good players, um, good people teach you so much more than you'll ever be able to teach them. And what I try to do is just reinforce uh, the behaviors that you want to see modeled uh, and and make much of it, whether it be through video or whether it be through uh, past players and experiences that that you can tell them about. Coach, there's, there's so much to your job that goes beyond just the X's and the O's. And, of course, we're talking about things that, that are bigger than ball right now. You know, one of the things that, that, that stands out to me is 
the fact that, that you got a degree in finance from Texas A&M University, but getting your master's degree, you went to Dallas Theological Institute. I mean, you your degree there is in biblical and theological studies. Something, by the way, that was mentioned on more than one national broadcast <laughs> recently, too, it, because it stands out. You know, for someone who has been coaching at the Division One level for quite some time, like like you have. What does having a degree like that mean to you? How do you put something like that into practice? Yeah, there, there was a pastor um, from Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship named Dr. Tony Evans. And Dr. Evans, when I was at Baylor, was our chaplain. And he would come in and he would speak to the guys. And I was always just mesmerized. Like, man, where did this guy learn scripture? Like, this guy can communicate and he knows scripture pretty well. I was always enamored with Chuck Swindoll, another pastor out of the Dallas area. Um, Andy Stanley is a pastor out of Atlanta. Um, Howard Hendricks was a professor at DTS. Long story short, I, I, I've just listened to these guys so much uh, throughout the course of my life. And I'm like, where did y'all learn this stuff from? And it was at Dallas Theological Seminary. And the fact that I could enroll online and, and and I wanted to do it to become a better coach. Players after practice would they wouldn't necessarily come up to me and say, how do I shoot a free throw better? Or what's our side pick and roll coverage? It was coach. My dad hit my mom last night and I'm going to see him later today. What should I tell him? And I realized how equipped I needed to be. Not that I was ever going to handle that situation. You would obviously send those type of situations to professionals. But I just realized how inequipped I was. And I think every single person in the world is involved in ministry. Um, everybody is ministering in some capacity, you know, whether it be as a husband or as a dad at my house, whether it be in the workplace, uh, whether it be amongst friends. Um, we're all displaying something that is ministering positively or negatively to somebody else. And so I wanted to minister well. And in order to minister well, I needed to know scripture well. And DTS offered me an opportunity to learn online. The president at that time, Dr. Mark Bailey, uh, he played basketball. And so I, I always love the analogies that, that he would often bring up. But I went there to become a better coach because I wanted yeah. to better serve my players. And, and that was the motive. Everybody was, do you want to be a pastor? And uh, do you want to get involved in ministry? And I always tell them, I'm already involved in it, and I mm -hmm. preach every single day to, to 12 guys who are six, six and taller. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and so from that context, it, it helped me know God better and by, by knowing Scripture better. And those things has allowed me to better serve um, the people that, that I've been get the opportunity to serve. You know what? And I, I want to ask you about that a little bit later on, too, because it, there is... Um, we need to realize these things all take part in our day, daily walk, no matter what you're doing, no matter what your employment is. You know, the, I, I do believe people uh, confuse being in the ministry with being employed by a church. And yeah, they're, they're two yeah. separate things. I mean, really. Yeah. Dr. James Naismith, when he started the game of basketball, it was done as an evangelistic tool. He also mm -hmm. went to seminary. And he said, I can impact more people through sports than I ever could in the pulpit. You know, you've heard Billy Graham saying that a coach is going to impact more lives in a year than most people will the rest of their entire lives. Yeah. And so for me, you don't need a formal education um, in, in order to know Scripture better. Um, you just need to be committed to knowing Scripture better. And, and I think those are going to help you. I don't care what it is you're doing. Uh, the more in line and aligned you are with God. Um, the better you're going to have an opportunity to actually get the most out of whatever stewardship responsibilities you've been privileged uh, to undergo. I like that. I'm I'm going to probably keep that, by the way, about being committed to knowing Scripture. And and I may give you credit for it uh, someday. We'll <laughs> see. <laughs> uh, I love that there, there's a quote. I think it's from John Wesley that that Scripture isn't written for our information. It's written for our transformation. You know, it's not written so we can go win a trivia contest. And you know what? I know more than you and I can tell you where this Bible verse is. It's, it's written for our transformation, that mm -hmm. you and I are transforming and becoming better a, a, as men and as people in order to influence in whatever short time we have here on earth. Mm -hmm. and, and we just want to steward that well because we realize that this is so temporary and, and it's interim. 
and uh, and you realize that, you know what, I, I want to do a good job. I can think of nothing worse than just wasting time. Uh, Psalm 90, it's the only psalm that Moses wrote. Um, he, he, he says, uh, and, and it's a prayer, and he says, Lord, um, give me a heart of wisdom so that I may number my days uh, to present a, a, a heart of wisdom. And so all of those things, we just realize how finite this is. And I don't want to waste time of the opportunities that, that you've been privileged to undertake. We're speaking here with Paul Mills, the head men's basketball coach at ORU. Coach, there there is so much going on around us all the time. I mean, we're just bombarded with information. I would even say with things to distract us uh, very nearly 24-7, if not 24-7. How do, how do you stay accountable then to be able to walk this out before your your staff and your team? Yeah, one, the, 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 the first 30 minutes uh, of my day are – pretty important. Um, I, I need to spend time reading um, scripture. I need to spend time in prayer. I need to spend time in worship. And so, um, and, and in order to make sure that's quality, uh, I, I need to make sure I get a good night's rest. Uh, <laughs> so, so sleep is pretty high on, uh, on, on my schedule list. And, and because if I don't do well on sleep, I, I don't do a good job um, with the rest of my time. And then, if and that doesn't always go well, but but if if I can make sure that as I wake up, I, I don't take my phone with me. The phone is not the first thing I grab. Usually, coffee is the first thing that I grab, <laughs> and, and just I realize nobody's solving any problems here at whatever time. Um, usually early in the morning, and nobody's we're, we're not we're, we'll solve this after eight or after nine. And so I need to make sure that that I'm focused on what I need to be focused on. And, and, and that's um, a stewardship uh, uh, of what I've been granted. And so I need to lock in uh, early and it doesn't always go well uh, through the course of the day. And I have to put myself in check. And usually after another good night's sleep, I can uh, recalibrate and make sure, but, but the, the mornings for me are pretty significant. Well, coach, then let, let's wrap it up. And, and, and I appreciate your time very much today in thinking about that and, and realizing, you know, we, we talked about the fact that the, we're in ministry pretty much all the time anyway, and it's not necessarily the, the four walls of the church, but here we are in 2021 now and, and beyond. And with social distancing and so many other factors that come into play now, uh, there are fewer people that are, at least that is the trend right now, that are that are going into the four walls of a physical church building. Uh, then how, how important then is it that we recognize that there is a spiritual world, it's really real, and it is going on around us right now. And you're talking about living that out with, with that idea, the fact that, yeah, th this is real all the time. Yeah. I mean, obviously the, the past year has been a change on everybody. And, and, and I mean, even now, uh, <laughs> I mean, there's still some hesitancy for, for people to go amongst others. And, and it's, it's obviously calculated based on everybody's individual assessment of just where they are. Um, the, the need to be plugged in and, and it looks different than it, than it did a year ago. Yeah. Um, the need to be plugged in is, is important. As I tell people, if we stuck a hundred computers all in a row, um, and, and they all had the same screens, you would never know, um, that there was much of a difference in them in, in regards to their sustainability until, you know, sometime a day or two passed. And then some of them would no longer be working because you don't know if they're plugged into a power source. Um, this all looks the same for everybody on the outside, but eventually you're going to realize whether or not somebody has a power source uh, that is invested in them. And, and that comes through knowing Christ. Um, that comes because, man, that is our source. Uh, that That is our sustainability. But that also comes with being a part of a church. Uh, I, I've often used the phrase, I had a professor at DTS that says, I don't know how you can say um, you, you love the groom, but you hate the bride. Uh, <laughs> usually if you hate the bride, you probably hate the groom and the groom isn't going to like you if you actually hate his wife. 
And so knowing that Jesus is the head of this body of believers that we call the church, um, this body of believers also provides us a, a, a level of sustainability and a level of a power source that we need to be engaged in. And it's going to look different uh, for a lot of people. Uh, but the reality is, is we have to make sure, sure that that our source of power is in the right place, because just glancing at a whole bunch of computers, they're all going to look the same. Um, but what we don't see over the course of time is the sustainability and the ability to adapt to these situations. And, and that's going to come from a proper power source. So it is important that we be plugged in somewhere. I, wow, well, I got a lot out of that. I really appreciate that. And, and thank you. You've, um, uh, give me some good visuals to, to consider and ponder and think about coach Paul Mills, the head men's basketball coach at Oral Roberts university. Thank you so much for taking some time with us today and, and sharing how you're walking out and, and living these things that are bigger than ball. Thank you very much for taking time with us today. Joey, thanks a ton. It's been an honor.